So this is a story that most Christians won't like. But I want you to understand the point that I'm making. So the year was 600 BCE. A man was surrounded by his family. This Yoruba man was surrounded by his family in West Africa. The elders came in and gave him his last rites. They chanted and they prayed. They prayed to Ogun to allow this man to enter into the realm of the ancestors. Upon closing his eyes, this man who had been a law-abiding citizen, lived in harmony with nature, nurtured his family, loved his wife, and protected his community, opened his eyes and saw that there were no ancestors around. Where are the ancestors? He thought to himself. And then a figure came. This figure came and said, welcome, my son. Welcome to heaven. I am Yeshua. The man looked at him and said, who? Ye Yeshua, who are you? Yeshua said, for those who believe in me shall enter the gates of heaven. The man said, heaven? What is this heaven? Is it a good place? Is it a bad place? I am looking for my ancestors. Yeshua said, you will not find your ancestors here because your ancestors did not believe in me. The man says, well, how can I have believed in you if I've never heard of you? Yeshua looking puzzled. Well, I would imagine that you would not have heard of me since I would not have been born yet on earth for another 600 years. So that makes sense. But Yeshua said, the, but I have been foretold. I have been foretold in the writings of the Israelite people. The old man says, who are the Israelites? Who are these people? Yeshua looks puzzled again and said, well, yeah, that message was only given to those people in this small little area. So I guess you wouldn't have heard of them either. But, but, Yeshua proclaimed, my father said that the writings will be upon the hearts of men. The old man looked and said, the writings? What writings? Yeshua again puzzled and says, well, yeah, he, that was in Deuteronomy and he was only talking about the Israelite people that it would be written upon the hearts of them. But unfortunately, I don't make the rules, proclaimed Jesus. My father makes those rules. So unfortunately, you have to go to hell. Hell? What is this hell that you speak of? <sighs> I sure puzzled again. I guess you wouldn't know what hell is either, huh? Since we only talked about Sheol, and that is just death. Never really talked about people going into a place of torment. Those writings hadn't been written yet concerning hell. Hmm. Now I want you to think about something for a second. A person who would have lived their life in 600 BCE would have never heard about Jesus. A person who had lived their life in West Africa would have never heard about the Israelites. They would have never read any of the writings. As a matter of fact, a person of Yoruba in the 600 BCE would have been worshiping Shango, would have been worshiping Oshun and Ogun, Mamawata. Depending upon what tribe you, was, you were in, if you was Igbo, you would have been worshiping, and I'm going to say the name wrong, but Choktek, Choktek. How would a person who never heard of Jesus, never heard of the Israelites, ever come to worship this God? They wouldn't. So how is it 
that Christians believe that at the end of times, when the dead are given up by the earth, when the dead are given up by the sea, that when all come to face the judgment, that there will be trillions of people who would have never heard of Jesus. I could have told that story from the point of view of 1357 of a West African man. He would have never heard of Jesus. I could have told that story of an Aztec man or woman in the 1400s, 1300s, who would have never heard of Jesus, who would have never heard of an Israelite, who would have never heard of Yahweh. How would your God, who is supposed to be just, would arbitrarily send these people to hell whose names will not be written in the book of life because they've never believed in your Jesus. They've never even heard of your Jesus. So if you haven't heard of your Jesus, how can they ever believe in your Jesus? And yet you claim that your God is a just and merciful God. How is that justice when a person has never heard of it? You know, even as man, when I was in Germany, when I first got there, now granted, we do get a short class on the customs of Germany, on the ways that you live your life in Germany. But the first time I went to England, I did not get that briefing. And when I went into a bar and I ordered two drinks, for those who, are, who know, I came up to the bartender and I said, let me get two. And the bartender cursed me out. And, but once he realized that I was an American, he explained to me that if you want two of something, you do like this. Because when you do like that, it's like doing like this. <laughs> so I didn't know. But the bartender didn't hold me accountable for the information that I did not know. He simply corrected me. Now, according to your teachings, at the end times, when it comes to the pearly gates, there is no second chance to finally know. There is no opportunity for you to be able to say, well, since I'm here, and since you're here, I guess you are some type of entity that I should have worshipped. But the question that I would ask, if I was this African man living in 600 BCE, why did your, this God not come and tell me of his existence? If I was this Aztec man who lived in 1300 CE, why did your God, why did you and your God, your father, not come to us? Why did you not teach us? Why did you not reveal yourself to us? Because in 1357, no one in the Americas knew of your God. No one in the Pacific knew of your God. No one in Asia knew of your God. No one, except in this Mediterranean parts of North Africa, knew of your God. And let me say that clearly to all of those who are going to say that Christianity was in Africa. Yes, Ethiopia. Yes, North Africa, Egypt in the 1300s. As early as 300, as early as 200 and 100 CE, it was in Egypt, but it did not come to Ethiopia until 330. But that is a small, you know how large Africa is? Small part of Africa. For Southern Africa, for south of the Sahara. No one heard of you, Jesus. And the Wayuda is not the kingdom of Judah. So how is your God fair? How? He is not if he is real. And no Christian can truly and honestly answer that question. So y'all have a great day. And remember always, you have to free yourself to be yourself. Because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.